something, oh God. Let there be solutions released in the name of Jesus by his assumption. Let destinies be changed in the name of Jesus. That your servant shall not be another president, but it shall be a man after the heart of God. We pray for your servant. Many have declared that he shall not finish his term. But we decree he shall finish and continue his term. In the name of Jesus, we arrest all powers of hell. Release from the way rivers. Release from the skies. Release from beneath. We ask that your servant, O oh God, shall finish his term and he shall continue it. We declare he shall not die but live. To declare the works of God, we declare his life protected by angelic powers and angelic forces. If by chance the name Nana Ado Akufuado falls into the mind of any demonic powers, powers in the heavens, powers on the ground, powers in hell, let the blood of God speak. Let the blood of God speak. Let the blood of God speak. We decree the same angels that were released for his victory to be released for his protection. And we speak over him. We speak over his ministers. We speak over the vice president. And we speak over everyone in here that this regime shall succeed. The regime shall not fail. They shall not fail. They shall not fail. Heavenly Father, give them the wisdom, the technical know-how, the dynamism, oh God, not just to talk, but to fulfill your cause in this nation. Thank God for victory. Thank God for victory. Thank God for victory. And everybody in here shouted a big amen. Well, 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 give the Lord a shout! Prayers delivered for the president-elect, Nane Kufuadu, there. Uh, all the men of God present made it to gather around him and pray for him specially and also deliver a prayer to the nation asking for his tenor to be that which will be smooth and without any blemish, giving him the strength and wisdom to rule the country for the next four years. Now, I did mention that I will find a name for that a man who delivered the preaching just before the prayers. He's Reverend Canon J. Nelson of the Akrari Church. It's an interdenominational church, but he, Reverend Canon J. Nelson, is an Anglican priest. So that's uh, by way of information for you, for the man who delivered the um, sermon just before the prayers were offered a few minutes ago. Elton Probe, a man... Elton Probe, my colleague, is currently... I speak some of the dignitaries at the Accra Sports Stadium. And everything pointed to a takeoff, economic takeoff by the country. They plunged us into hardship. And then another downcry from nowhere, with a battle is the lost slogan, has been able to snatch power again for us. I'm overjoyed. I am overjoyed. Going forward, what do you think should be the main priorities of Nana Kupa? I know that you've made some promises. But personally, what do you think should be achieved within the first few days of his administration? First few days, uh, Nana should be able to select ministers and other leaders who will inspire confidence in the people. That's very, very critical. The people who will come out as ministers and all of our appointees to inspire confidence. Because if he gets that one wrong, the people will lose confidence in us, and that will be disastrous. That's what I think. And, and how should he take the intense lobbying to get people appointed into ministerial positions? He should take it coolly, in strides, take his time, assess each one on his own merit, not be stampeded by anybody, friends, family, whatever. Forget about them. This is own conscience. He knows the people around him. He knows their capabilities, and I expect that he will rely on his sound judgment to come up with the selection of the ministers. Thank you very much, Mr. Sam, uh, Mr. Stephen team. Let me pick just one word for Mr. Sam Okujato, a seasoned lawyer and a staunch member of the MP. Mr. Okujato, just one question. What should this new MPP administration represent? Well, I think it was stated that they wanted change. It is 
to represent change from what has gone on. Change to put away corruption, nepotism, tribalism, and all the isms. Whether we can have a country where we all belong, expect that every Ghanaian will feel part of the government to contribute, to change the country for the better. That is, I believe, what it's all about. The former administration was noted for the entrenchment of the rule of law and the golden age of business. Should this new administration follow same suit? The golden age of business is to ensure that government is not in the business of doing business. Business is done by the people. The government is to create the environment whereby the people can work. And I think this is what Abilin Anado is talking about. That they'll create the environment to encourage Ghanaian to use their God-given talent to build this nation, to be a shiny example for the rest of the continent. Thank you very much. That was Mr. Sam Okujato, a seasoned lawyer and a leading member of the NPP. I'll go down and see if we can still get some few people to speak to before we hand you over to the main days because the man of the moment is about to speak very soon and we'll hear from him before we bring down the curtain on our transmission for today. Yeah, Mr. Oswaj, you are live on the Joy News Channel on Multi TV. Once again, congratulations. Thank you, but the, 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 the service is still going or ongoing? Yeah, but, 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 but we can still pay some one or two words from you. Well, we show Ghanaians well. They would ask for the support of all Ghanaians with a good heart and eventually to move this nation forward in the manner that every Ghanaian will be catered for. And um, at the end of the day, move Ghana up to the best rank of the development ladder. And my final question will be, at this time, a lot of interest, lobbying for appointment to the key ministerial position. How should Nana take some of, all, some of these pressures? Well, it's in his bosom. He has the constitutional responsibility to appoint them and he's consulting, so in the fullness of time that will be done. Mr. Mr. Hakman Rosu Ajeman is a former minister and also a leading member of the MPP. Sheikh I.C. Kray is also a leading member of the MPP, a former member of parliament, a former minister of state, and now in his, in his all-white apparel, uh, enjoying the atmosphere today. Sheikh, welcome to the Joy New Channel of Multi TV. Oh, thank you, thank you, sir. And uh, now, I think the Agwena is in order. Oh, yes, the Agwena, the Agwena has come to be. Yes. So, in a little over two weeks' time, Nana will formally take office and then the business of the day will start. How should the first few days be for Nana as he implements what is promised Ghanaians? Well, the few, the few days actually will, 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 will come out with uh, the policies. Because I think that uh, the policies you know, are you know, being framed up now, as even we sit here. And uh, Nana has got to go to Parliament. So, ladies and gentlemen, at this stage. And then also the budget, the new the order, budget has, got, has, has, has will, be, will be announced to the one. nation. And then from, from, from the budget, the practical, the practical aspects will flow. You, 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 you have been in government before, you've been an MP before. For the first time in the history of our, of our parliament, the MPP is walking into the chamber with an absolute majority, 170 MPs elect. I mean, some people have the view that, obviously, people are saying that it's about time parliament is empowered to be very much independent of the executive. Now, with this number going into parliament, is it not going to be the yes for the executives? Well, I'm, 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 I'm sure of uh, those uh, who have, have been elected to go to parliament. And I know that they're going to, they are not going to be able to start with a rubber stamp. You know, what, what, what Nana Agdo is going to present to parliament will be policies that are, are well framed up. Are well framed policies that are well written, not policies that will go to parliament and come amendments and all that and so on and so forth. Everything will be well done. As we as we sit down, 
are waiting for the uh, Ishwari in as we are much, 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 much is being done. So that when it's, uh, 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 it, it, takes, it takes, takes office, then things will start moving straight away and all that. But as I, as I said, we cannot move. Oh, uh, be horrible. All right. So uh, we, we are still speaking to Sheikh Isukwe and Mr. Samakuja to just interrupted our uh, interview. It's all, it's all good. So, Sheikh, you, 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 you are talking about what you intend doing in, in, in a few days that you'll be in power. Oh, yeah, the, the, the few days that you've been in power is that, you see, the, the policies will, 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 will be flowing, and then Parliament will have to look at them. And uh, the, uh, the, the, the best way possible is that Parliament has got to look and scrutinize all the, the papers or policies that we've got with them. So that when, when everything is well done, and I think, that, I think that actually we shall have a, a good, a quick, quick, quick start. And my final question will be about lobbying for ministerial and other appointments. At this stage, the president-elect obviously will be under a lot of pressure considering interest from every sector, every corner of the party. How should he handle such pressures? Well, I, I think that this that, 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 that is practical, that that, 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 that will happen to, you know, to any, 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 any uh, president-elect. But you see, but this man, the essence of uh, party politics is that he's had, your, he's had the, your occasion, the privilege of moving with all of us. All right. So he knows, actually, he knows all of us. For, for look at it from 2008, 2012, and 2016. He's got to know all of us. Those who are good, those who are who are who are who, who, who know. The, the, the point is that there is, there is a difference between uh, uh, party party politics and also uh, uh, military, 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 military government. All right. Yes. Thank you very much, Sheikh. I see great. Now, what I'm going to do is now go back to the place. And let's speak to some few other people, and then we'll, we'll bring this interview to a close. Now, the, the man of the moment will speak very soon, but what is happening is that I'm privileged to be sandwiched between two very important personalities in this country. And indeed, Mr. Yofi Grant, and then uh, Prof, Prof will also speak to me very shortly. But let me start with Mr. Yofi Grant. Mr. Yofi Grant, the expectation is high. I mean, you you work with the private sector and you know how important some of these you know victories are in terms of meeting the expectation of the ordinary Ghanaian, because job is key on the agenda of many people how should that be tackled going forward after the 7th of january well indeed there are many challenges uh, but we see them as opportunities to fix the country once and for all i mean the the issue of recreating a ghana that creates a business environment that is good to its people and good to businesses is very important. And of course, that's a fulcrum of creating jobs. The fact that you want to change the economy from one based on taxation and debt to one based on productivity um, and, and growth of the economy. So of course, the private, the private sector is going to be energized in real ways. It's not just going to be the rhetoric. We need to look at our tax regimes. We need to look at the opportunities for people to be able to register their businesses and we need to look at business. So Alton Brobe there, uh, holding a number of interviews with the dignitaries at the Accra Sports Stadium. Let me just remind you that in just a few minutes, the president-elect, uh, Nana Kufwado, will be addressing uh, the crowd at the Accra Sports Stadium. And as you can see, uh, he's just about to begin uh, his address, adjusting the microphones and preparing to deliver his message after the prayer set for him and all the um, performances by the gospel artist. It's now time to hear from the man of the moment, the president-elect Nana Akufu Ado. Let's hear him now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. His Excellency, the president-elect, is going to speak to us. Thank you. Vice President elect of the Republic, Al Haji Dr. Mahmoud Baumia.
and the incoming second lady, the dynamic Hajia Samira Baumia. The great clergy assembled here, the acting national chairman of the NPP, Honorable Freddie Blay, my good friend Elimbele Blay, the chairman of the NPP Council of Elders, the veteran statesman C.K. Tedder, the minority leader in parliament, Honorable Oseche Mensa Bonsu, the regional chairman of NPP, honorable members of parliament and members of parliament elect, executives and dignitaries of the NPP, members of the great Kukudu party, fellow Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen, and last, by no means the last, by no means the least, my beautiful, beloved Rebecca. And my cherished daughters, Jankroma, Valerie, and Doquia, my sister Marigold, my brother Edward, and the rest of my family. What can I say? My dear friends, but to thank the Almighty God and rejoice in his everlasting goodness and kindness to us all. My heart is full as I stand before you today, washed over by the enormity of the wonders he has wrought. And I'm, all, and I'm grateful to all the clergy assembled here who have led us in this stirring service. Let me thank all of you, the many hundreds and hundreds, that have come out here today to join us, to give thanks and praise to the Lord and the many, many more around the country. Indeed, thanks to modern technology, I know there are many others around the globe who are watching and joining, joining us in this most satisfying endeavor. We must thank the Almighty for our country, Ghana. On December 7, the Ghanaian people proved once again that we can and do rise to the occasion when the need arises. We came out on that day and conducted ourselves with dignity and serenity. I am grateful to all of you, the, to the millions who voted for me and the, mid, and the many millions who voted for others on the ballot. We must thank the good Lord for the many unsung heroes who simply performed the task of a patriotic citizen and did not ask to be recompensed. It is the Ghanaian way. How can we ignore the poignant convergence of events on the evening of Friday the 9th, 2016, when our president, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, was calling me to concede defeat in the best tradition of Ghanaian statesmanship, President Yaya Jame of the Gambia was renouncing the surprising concession of his defeat in elections held a week before. We are a blessed people in Ghana. 
and we must appreciate the goodness of the law and work ceaselessly to deserve his grace. When we began our campaign, when we set forth on this journey, when we embarked on our electoral mission, we committed ourselves and our mission to the law. We did not say the battle was ours, did we? What did we say? The battle is the law. Did we say, did we say we could win the, the election of 2016 by ourselves? No. Did we say we were Goliath, clad in intimidating protective armor? No. Did we say we had might? Did we say we had money or gold? or silver, we said the battle was the law. We agreed that we were David, small, meek, modest, and without the loud, exaggerated armor of money, except for a small, unthreatening slave. But we kept our heads up and squared our shoulders and set forth with firmness and unwavering conviction. We did not blink. And in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3, he said, For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens, it hastens to the end it will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. And so we knew that the battle was the Lord's. Fellow Ghanaians, my personal journey to this day has been a long, long one. A journey of over four decades, working shoulder to shoulder with fellow patriots and nationalists for democracy in our beloved Ghana. Our stamina has been tested, but we kept going in the full belief that the battle was the Lord's. The going was not easy. The road has been rough. The valleys were deep and the mountains were steep. We stumbled many times along the way. Sometimes we came tantalizingly close to the, to the proverbial walls of the city, but painfully the city gates were closed in our faces. But we never lost hope. We learned from each mistake and we soldiered on in the belief that in his own time we will get there better prepared. We took inspiration from God's word. In Psalm, the book of Psalms, chapters 27, verse 14, and the psalmist says, Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. And so we took courage and worked in the full knowledge that the battle was the Lord's. Some of our most loyal companions have not made it to this most famous and emphatic victory. It is sad that Al Haji Aliu Muhammad, who so distinguished himself 
in the office of Vice President of the Republic could not witness this day. It is heartbreaking that Otanka Obete Bilemte, my childhood friend, is not here by my side today to savor the moment. It is difficult to accept that Adams Mahama, the dynamic chairman of our party in the Upper East Region, is not here with us. It is tragic my cousin and political neighbor, J.B. Dankwa Edu, is not here with us. <coughs> Excuse me. It is sad that the bubbly Peter Riafi Prepra is not here. It is painful that young, bright, hardworking, and cheerful Kwame Bwedu is not here with us. And that Abubakar Sadiq should miss this occasion. We remember them and many others and acknowledge the role they play to bring us this far. I am expressing here today my profound gratitude to successive generations of this great elephant family who have stood for freedom and justice all through our country's history, sometimes at great personal cost, and who have resisted all attempts to dismember and divide their ranks. Their fortitude, their resilience, their sense of purpose are a great credit to our nation. It is that spirit of sacrifice and service that inspired all the members of the campaign team, led by the tireless, able Peter McMenu, the campaign strategist, the campaign manager, the campaign strategist Dan Butry, the campaign administrator, Edward Wati, and Joe Anochi, the technical director, who planned and gave us this great victory. I am forever in their debt. As I am in the debt of those who went on the grueling campaign with me around the country, particularly Alan Shermatin and Otiko Afisa Jabba. I cannot leave out Diana Asamoa, Ejako, Lucky Mensa, Praia Tintin, Praia Chetia, and all the other great stars who left their comfort zone and came on the rugged terrain of party politics and made such a great contribution to our victory. Many thanks also to the media, many of whom made a determined effort to take our message to the Ghanaian people. They are part of this positive history. It is always invidious to single out individuals on such an occasion, especially when there were so many who helped in diverse ways. But I hope everyone will understand if I single out the young man who I know is going to write a brilliant chapter in the economic history of our country, and whom God has given to me as my vice, Muhammadu Baumia, who made who made an inestimable contribution to the success of our effort. I look forward eagerly to working with him for the progress of our beloved Ghana.
the contribution of our respective wives deserves a book of its own. For the time being, let me just say merely, say thanks. Thanks, Samira. Thanks, Rebecca. And I thank the scores and scores of people who gave their widow's might to keep our campaign afloat. And today, we are here. The good, discerning, and God-fearing people of Ghana have spoken resoundingly. We are grateful to God for preserving the peace of our nation through this election, despite the fears and apprehensions of many citizens. We conducted ourselves largely peacefully. I do recognize that there have been some instances of misconduct and altercations that should not have happened. Such behavior is unbecoming of us. I call on all Ghanaians, everyone, to act with kindness, generosity, and magnanimity towards one another, and to forgive anyone who may have wronged or hurt you. Remember, the battle is the law. Now, even as we praise God for his immense kindness and grace towards our country, we also know that we have a lot of work ahead of us. It is a task that we can and will perform with your support and with your hard work and with your unceasing prayers and with the full blessing of Almighty God. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 says, But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Let us then renew our strength and our faith and get ourselves ready for the work ahead. <coughs> I have no doubt at all that with God on our side, we shall succeed. The good Lord has promised that in his own time, he will make all things beautiful. This is his appointed time, and that is why the battle is still the Lord's. God bless you all and our country, Ghana. <laughs> Thank you very much. Give your Lord a shout! Well... So that was the president-elect, Nana Kufwado, addressing the supporters there at the Accra Sports Stadium.